Hey everyone, welcome back. So I was playing with my optical flat yesterday when I was getting annoyed by the quality of the fringes I was getting and I was trying to find a better way to do that. I was trying to use this 405 nanometer laser up here as a monochromatic light source to see fringes and I just couldn't get any really super easily visible fringes on the surface. Then I realized when I held up an object to the reflected beam, I could get extremely good fringes, as you can see here. Now, I think this is a type of, technically it's the same operating principle as a Fizeau interferometer, or similar to that at least. Um, but I was, I was quite amazed by the uh, quality of the fringes I could get and upon further investigation, I found that by varying the height of the light source, I could actually zoom in and get really zoomed in inter, uh, interferometric images. Um, so that was pretty cool. So I thought I'd show you a couple examples of what we can see with this system and uh, some possible improvements that I could make to it to make an actually really robust metrology setup here. So what we're looking at here, and I'll adjust the exposure a bit so the fringes are slightly better to look at, um, is a little toolmaker's flat that I tried lapping a while ago um, before I really knew anything about how to do any of that. Um, I think I've shown this on the channel before. <clears throat> But you can see there's a couple of defects in it. And those defects actually show up really nicely uh, in the in the fringe pattern there. And I'm gonna use the height gauge that the laser's mounted on to bring down the light source. And you can see we've actually got a pretty high degree of zoom there to where we can really just inspect uh, tiny little deviations in the fringes uh, and actually get a sense of exactly how deep those, those scratches are on these little defects. You can, it's just not as deep as we can go, um, but I guess it's kind of hard to film if we go much closer to that. But that ability to zoom is a really unique and powerful tool, I mean, in my opinion at least, uh, for beyond just the regular use of optical flats. Because um, if you're just staring at it from above, you don't get that, that sort of fine detail. So we can take it off of there and look at something more common. Here we have the... Uh, the humble gauge block, as one might expect. Nice straight lines on that one. Come back. Now, I'm not saying this isn't entirely not finicky, but it's a lot better than having to mess around with the optical flat with no other way of viewing the image. So there you can see that. Here's a diamond turned piece of uh, aluminum that is scrapped because as you can see, we got the recipe wrong and it, it ended up rubbing quite a bit there. This fringe pattern here indicates a uh, conic, uh, which makes sense because this was made on a spindle that wasn't super well aligned with the axis that it was moving in, so it cut a bit of a taper on there, or a, a facial taper, if you will. It's a cone, basically. And we can tell that because of the evenly spaced fringes to the, all the way to the outer edge there. We can also use it to inspect things like other pieces of glass, um, which is pretty neat. This is just a piece of or silicate float glass. It's kind of dirty. Um, 
but even still, immediately really nice high quality fringes, just like that, uh, with minimal effort. Um, you can manipulate it and make it look however you want, but well, this is a pretty clever way of, of uh, using an optical flat. Um, I've never really seen anything quite like this. I know this is a similar concept to the Fizzo interferometer, uh, but it is not exactly the same. So if anyone knows exactly what I'm doing here, <laughs> let me know, because I don't. Um, this guy's got a nice piece of dust on him, so he's not gonna behave, it looks like. That's the idea. Um, hope you guys found that interesting. And I will see you next time.